Launch to success with Vera V. v. I've achieved every item on my 2023 vision board. So in this episode, I'm sharing the top seven things that'll help you and I make 2024 our most successful year yet. And stay until the end of this episode because I'll be sharing a routine that will help you truly level up. Hi, I'm Vera V. Welcome to my podcast, Launch Success. I'm a full-time content creator, a social media coach, successful entrepreneur, and an absolute self-improvement lover. And I'm actually particularly excited for this episode. Do you know why? Because... New year, new me, <laughs> goal setting, vision board. This is my favorite thing in the absolute world. And I'm so excited to be sharing tools that helped me level up with you, my absolute best friend, Gen V. Now, before we do that, I want to give you a little bit of a life update. First, I want to talk about my day a little bit because <laughs> I think it's been amazing and so slight. And Christmas has just passed, which is so exciting. And I got some really cool Christmas gifts that I want to share about. First and foremost, Christmas wise, my boyfriend gave me a hatch alarm, um, hatch restore which is an alarm that's going to help you normalize your circadian rhythm. Like it's super gentle at waking up. I've only tried it once so far, but I'm super excited to keep going. And um, what's cool about it is it's typically when you wake up and you have the alarm, it's like, it's triggering. Okay. I don't like it. It's not the vibe. I don't want to be waking up like that. But on the hatch, you have, basically, I have my alarm for 6.15 a.m. I probably want to move it ideally to 6 a.m., but I'm moving my way back up because honestly, during these holidays, I don't know if it's just me, but I've been really relaxing. I've been really diving deep into the relaxation nation. So I've been waking up at seven and that's not something I'm proud of because Gen V, you know me as a 5 a.m. girly. (laughs) I've been a 5 a.m. girly for a long time, but you know what? It became seven because I go to sleep at like 11 p.m. And I've actually been getting geese in sleep, which for me is crazy. If me a year ago, we're going to hear this. She would go nuts. She would be bamboozled. Anyway, so 30 minutes before your alarm rings, your hatch makes the light brighter and brighter and brighter. So it imitates a sunrise. So thus you wake up super gently and then you can choose your alarm. Mine is the ocean. And for the first time ever, I'm not triggered by waking up. I just wake up and I'm like, mm, what a beautiful day. And then you can have a morning moment, which it can play music for you. You can choose. I'm doing a little mindfulness exercise i think or like breathing honestly i don't remember in the morning don't ask me what i did or what i didn't do i don't remember i completely zone out like i'm not there mentally and the nighttime it sends me a little reminder at 9 45 p.m like hey Vera, it's time to go to sleep it starts playing ocean sounds again and it does a blue light and then it does a meditation for me as i fall asleep a breathing exercise gratitude exercise and then i can fall asleep to 430 hertz ambiance waves so that's the hatchery store i'm so grateful for it. it's one of the best gifts ever also something else my boyfriend got us and this is a gift idea for you if you are in a relationship or even if you have a friend that you just love and want to cherish this time of year it doesn't have to be for any particular reason but i told him i was like oh i would love to read a book together and obviously i love self-improvement stuff because i'm self-improvement junkie <laughs> live laugh self-improvement <laughs> live laugh self-growth live laugh wellness that these are my motives for life um live life success launch success with Verbi. Anyway, and he got us two books of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is super exciting. And we're going to be reading that together. And do not tell him this. And if you're listening to this, hey, it's time to turn off. <laughs> but I read that book before I started it and I absolutely hated it. So when he gave it to me, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is such a sweet idea, but I didn't like this book. Maybe I will though. I never gave it a shot because when uh, the author started talking about parenting, I'm very opinionated about parenting. Never had a kid, but I don't know. I've been making like how to parent video since I was 11 years old. (laughs) I stopped like 13, but still, I'm very opinionated, okay? And what the author was telling us about his kid, I was immediately like, no, like, I don't want to take advice from that kind of person. Um, So I don't know. I was like 16 (laughs) when I first read that. So anyway, maybe maybe I've changed. Maybe I've grown. Um, I'll let you know how that goes, a little reading date. But yeah, it's been an amazing Christmas. My bestie for the restie, she got me a little tea set from Porcelain. It's like so coquette. It would match perfectly. Like if you're watching me right now, I'm like a little pretty pink barbie doll you know imagine like a little porcelain rose cup (laughs) it's so cool and also she got me rose tea but that was a year in the past and i love rose tea um so that was my christmas i don't really officially celebrate because i'm russian we celebrate new year's not on january 7th on december 31st going to january 1st and the craziest thing about 2024 and how i know it's going to be a successful year is because it literally ends 2023 on a sunday and 2024 starts on a monday how much more perfect could it be? Like that is the ultimate Sunday reset, Monday startup. I don't know. I'm just so excited for this year. Um, so that's one update. Second update is I was invited to a wellness retreat to coach and to lead a practice, a very special one for 2024. The re- uh, retreat was called the 2024 Reset Retreat. And it's like wellness, spiritual. And the craziest thing about it is that not that long ago, I was making my 2024 goals list because like I said, I love goals. Every time I need to calm down, if I'm ever having a mental breakdown, <laughs> what I do is I start 
setting goals and planning for them. <laughs> I'm crazy that way. If, is it just me? Is it just me? I don't know. I feel like I'm very type A about those things, but genuinely it just brings me so much joy. And obviously acting on those goals is equally as important because if you just plan, but you don't do, it's a little strange if you ask me. Anyway, so I was invited to that retreat as a coach, which is crazy for me. Like it's a lot of professional development for me. And I led a goal setting practice with a coach, Alexandra. She was on my podcast, I think two episodes ago or so, relationship coach. Um, and then she led a vision board, vision map practice, which is also equally as amazing. So that's the thesis. The retreat went pretty well. Um, and this actually inspired this episode because I was like, oh my gosh, what a better way to reset for 2024 by learning how to make 2024 your most successful year yet. Now, let's move on to the credibility portion of this. What is my credibility to talk about such an enticing subject like making a year successful? Like I said, I've reached every item on my 2023 vision board to a crazy extent. Some items I admit, when I say every item, I mean every goal that stayed because some goals I set at the beginning of the year and then I just realized that that's not really something I wanted to do. I got some new goals as well, which is what happens in the process of living. <laughs> we live, we laugh, we love, we grow, <laughs> you know, that's the T and that's really how it goes. So what goals did I reach? Um, I think one of the bigger ones is that I've reached full financial freedom, which I think is the coolest thing in the world. Like I'm so grateful for my work and that it it's not just my work, it's also my ikigai, which I talked about in the previous episode, um, the meaning of that word, but my work is also my purpose. So it doesn't really feel like I'm working in the traditional sense of the word of where like, I have to work, I have to work. No, for me, it's like, I have to work, oh, I get to work. Like, for me, it is the absolute coolest thing in the world and it's so exciting. Second thing is that I finally joined my gym. <laughs> oh. <laughs> why I'm so excited about joining a gym is because I first came into that gym January 11th I think 2023 and I had a guest pass with my sister Alexandra who's also a coach in the retreat um and I came in there and I was like you know what? I want to go here someday and I was like I was trying to calculate how much money do I need to make in order to pay for it comfortably because I don't want the gym to be like a fourth of my income you know and that gym is expensive per month so I was like okay so you know how much do I need to make blah 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 um, I figured that out and yeah, I joined the gym. I joined the gym in July. I remember, I think my first day, they were July 31st. And when I tell you I've never been happier in a gym, I mean that to the fullest extent of the word. I've never been happier in a gym, truly. I don't even use all the amenities. Like I don't go to the pool. I don't go to the spa, but just the fact that I go there and no creepy men stare at me. It doesn't smell in there. I'm very big about smells. I'm very particular. <laughs> Everybody looks so nice. Everybody dresses nice. I feel inspired. I'm like motivated. I can work there if I want to. I can take showers there if I want to. Do I do any of those things? No, but I can't. <laughs> it is just so nice. All the machines are white and it's so aesthetic and the light is perfect. And I can take as many pictures and videos as I need. It's just so nice. So I'm really happy about joining that gym because for me, a big thing that I struggled with this year is this idea of spending money on myself. It's very challenging to me. It's like, oh, I don't know. Like spending money on myself, it always seems very um, rough because <laughs> it, it's like, okay, before some recent realizations, before I joined the gym, actually. So at the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, I don't deserve it. Like, what what did I do to join a nice gym? You know, maybe if I work harder and I make more and I do this and I do that, I can join the nice gym. But you know what? You know what? I think investing money into your dreams is important. And even if I'll go as far as saying that some purchases don't need to be justified. Say, for example, majority of people take pay 10% of their monthly income for a car lease. Let's just say that, okay? If to you, that 10% is 25%, but you're driving your dream car and it brings you absolute joy, you don't need to justify that. Some purchases do not need to be justified if they bring you happiness and fulfillment. You do not have to explain anything to anybody. Just join the gym, buy the car, buy the house, rent the condo, rent the apartment, doesn't matter, but do whatever makes yourself happiest while staying financially responsible. Because I'll tell you, with the gym, my family did not approve at first. Like they were like, very like, this is too bougie. Like, why are you trying to do this? Like, it's so expensive. If you really cared about your fitness, you would just, you know, just work out normally. That's what my dad said. My sister's too. Like they just not, did not get the hype. But I was like, you know what? You guys can think that way, but I choose not to limit myself with my mindset. <laughs> and I joined the gym and I'm the happiest ever. And I actually converted my boyfriend into joining me as well. He doesn't know that I converted him, but I really did. Because <sighs> why did he join right after me? Oh, because <laughs> I told him about it and I really hyped it up. Anyway, so um, third, <laughs> perfect segue. I got into a relationship. How amazing, how slay, how fantastic. 
Yeah, I really did not think I was going to be in my 2023 bingo cards this year. Actually, I thought I would be single or like in my dating Vera era with aerospace engineers who are German and or European. <laughs> Listen to um Dating for Self-Growth. I think that's what it's called. Or Dating in Your 20s episode. Tea. Tea has been spilt. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I honestly just did not expect that in the slightest. I don't know. I just... I never thought, I thought it would be at least five years until something serious happened and it did. And I think with the seriousness aspect of it, it's not like I'm like, okay, so I'm going to get married in like two years. No. Okay. No. It's a career oriented Vera era, obviously. Um, But serious in a sense where I've really never felt that way about a person before ever in my life. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, you know, like it's really cool and it's very nice and it's calm um it relaxes me a lot because I I was before we met I was very much an uptight person like I literally in my dating for in your 20s episode I said like oh I sh you should only date for self-growth <laughs> no you should date to be happy <laughs> because it brings joy into your life you can't have fun Vera it's okay <laughs> so yeah it's taught me a lot um a lot of communication skills were taught as well because I think communication is pretty tough like very tough actually and it's one of the most important skills ever so um now, fourth thing is I ran my first ever half marathon. <laughs> I knew I wanted to get into running and I actually did at the beginning of the year. My I shaved off like two or three minutes off my mile time, which is pretty crazy. And with a half marathon, I never thought I could run long distance because I don't really have a runner's body type um, in a sense. And I posted a video or like, I don't know, somebody listened to my podcast. They're like, what do you mean? Like, you look like you're 110 pounds. First of all, thank you for that. I'm not, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> but thanks, I really appreciate it. Think like, 110 pounds but 30 more <laughs> i am 5'8 so well anyway but i don't know i just it's i think something about growth is it's very important to do the things that you think you could never do just to show yourself that you can and that uh, experience of running half marathon has positively impacted every area of my life because the amount of confidence that i got is truly just irreplaceable i think it's been crazy now fifth thing is my insane social media reach. <laughs> reach. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I'm just really excited. Also, I get distracted because I have messages coming in right now. It's so hard being popular. <laughs> just kidding. I look like I should be like in Clueless Pink version right now or in um, Mean Girls. Well, anyway. So now I have a video going viral like every single week. Um, My clients' videos are going viral. One of my clients has a 13.8 million reach monthly. She was in my social media mentorship. Um, it's the last week of the membership right now. So <laughs> you can say I'm pretty happy, not as a, only as a full-time content creator, but also as a social media coach. So it's great. Now, six is that I think, well, not I think, practically and objectively, I entered a whole new level of income and money making. And I think I'm so happy about that. <laughs> I don't think I'm just happy about that. I know I keep saying that. To me, it's just such a crazy thing that I get to make as much as I make doing what I love to do the absolute most. To me, work does not feel like work. It feels like play. Even the social media coaching aspect of it today, I had three calls and you may go like, okay, like you had three meetings. Sure. Well, each one is over an hour long and it takes me about an hour to prepare for each one. So technically it was six hours of work and I'm not done working. I'm like 30% there. <laughs> so you can say it's going to be a long day today. Um, anyway, but I was just talking. Um, I think I was telling somebody this today, but I was like, you know what? If I had five more calls, like I would do it. I would totally would because it just energizes me so much. I love social media coaching. To me, it's play because social media is one of my favorite topics ever. And not just social media in the sense of like, okay, you get followers, you get likes. No, you turn it into a successful business, into a thriving online business. And I just love that. I really, really do. And so for me, when I'm coaching others, a lot of things get highlighted for me. I'm like, okay, I know exactly what video I'm going to make on at Vera V Coach, which is my coaching account. I repeat, at Vera V Coach. V-E-R-A-V-C-O-A-C-H. Spelling bee winner. Just kidding. Never won. Because when spelling bee was going around, I had just moved from Russia. So I didn't know that much English. Also, do you think I have an accent? My boyfriend told me I did, but I don't know if I do. We were talking about this like two days ago after our run, our weekly run. Anyway, so yeah, I entered a whole new level of income, not only with coaching, obviously, because, you know, scaling your business, developing it. That's great. Very exciting. I just love it. I just love it. So many cool launches, so many cool products. I'm preparing a lot right now as well, but also a whole new level in working with brands. This year, I work with Sarah V, which is crazy. I work with Aloe, as in Aloe Yoga. I work with Meta. They invited me to so many of their events and I just had a blast, blast from the past. I started going to influencer events this year as well. It's a whole new level of income, a whole new level of brands that I'm working with. The brands nowadays that I work with, they send me like not just PR packages, but like goodness packages, like goodie 
goodie bags or what's it called? It's like a package with like everything you need. I got the Stanley from a January partner that I'm working with. Good wellness. Shout out to you. I love your supplements so much. I'm actually addicted every single morning because they're gummies and they're like candy, but low sugar, obviously, and like actually great for your tummy. Like they feel good because candy, I don't really like anymore. I'm not going to lie. I just, I don't know. I just prefer other foods, but they are so good. Like I'm actually a fan. Okay. Now let's take a little sip from my Stanley together. Ah, I hope you heard that. Okay, now, moving on to the wellness retreat. This is going to be such a chatty episode, and I love that because it feels like we're on FaceTime together. <laughs> besties for the resties. So first, I got invited, and I really believe that I manifested that. And I think a key part of manifestation is visualization, but also work, putting in work, and obviously a little bit of luck. So I did not expect to get invited at all. <laughs> I know I want to go to another wellness retreat in 2024, maybe. Um, I actually want to host one of my own for creators, but I did not tell you that. Just kidding. I told you that. But when I told you that, manifest it for me. Okay. Send good vibes my way. And I'll say good vibes your way. May all your goals come true. <laughs> anyway. So yeah. And the experience itself was pretty cool. Um, We would wake up at like 7 a.m. We had a lot to do. It was a lot of interesting, strange people in a sense where people unlike anyone else I've ever met before. At first I thought it was in a bad way. Um, But then a big lesson I learned through this wellness retreat is that because culturally we're different mindset wise we're very different like those are not the people I would typically be friend in my daily life you know except for my sister Alexandra obviously but she's my best friend so like yeah so the biggest thing for me the biggest takeaway out of that wellness retreat was acceptance I think that's why I needed to go there besides coaching but also to learn to accept people as they are to accept that they're different people in the world and that's okay and I may not click with everybody and maybe people completely misinterpret me and who I am as a person but that's just fine that's just fine. And truly hosting a coaching practice, a goal setting session, it was very intense. It was really challenging because I've never worked with a group in real time, obviously via Zoom or online. Like I've, I'm a certified life coach, BT dubs. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that. So I've been coaching for a while. And then social media coaching, obviously, like I do that on a daily basis. I love it. It's favorite thing in the world. I just love coaching. And fun fact, I always incorporate life coaching into social media coaching as like a little bonus because truthfully to become a successful content creator to become a successful entrepreneur businessman businesswoman business person there's a lot of inner work that needs to be done and nobody talks about that it's the work of acceptance and kind of opening up your heart and your mind to new possibilities new opportunities and new people that's very important so yeah that's the thesis. Um, also, something I learned is how powerful a group dynamic is. And I've already known that, but it just really reinforced. Because when we were doing a visualization practice, which I'll talk about in a second, but um, it was to Awaken by Big Wild. I repeat, Awaken by Big Wild. Visualization to that. You close your eyes, you take a deep breath, you ground yourself, and you imagine your absolute most successful year yet. And you really feel it out. Like everyone your goals, visualize it and feel how it's going to feel. I've given this to everybody. I hosted, I was actually invited invited to coach a little morning session at Join Morning Club. All the creators do it there. They're cool. Hi, Chloe. Shout out to you if you're listening. Um, I've done this with my creators as well, obviously, at Creator Camp and my uh, social media mentorship. Like, everywhere I've done this. It's my favorite thing ever. I feel like I should really, you know what? I should make a reel about this and coin it. I should coin it because I've never seen anybody talk about this song, but it's insane. Awaken by Big Wild, visualization practice. And the thing about the group dynamic is when everybody was doing it, I actually got very emotional and tears started welling up in my eyes because I was like, oh my gosh, I've never witnessed anything more powerful, you know, which actually this gives me a video idea. Um, okay, hold on. Okay, amazing. <laughs> I love that you're listening to this. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> when an idea comes, write it down. That's my biggest tip for you. And another thing is about judgment as well. Um, I struggled with judgment a lot this year, but I have a lot of goals for 2024 that if I want to reach them, I have to stop caring about the judgment of others and opinions of others. Otherwise, I will objectively not reach my goals. So what really helped me with that was the retreat, actually, because at the end, we did like, and this is when I say, this is what I mean when I say that we were very culturally and mindset-wise different. But we just gave our honest opinions of each other. And the amount of BS I heard coming my way is crazy. I've never heard anybody BS anybody that way. Like, it felt like nobody got who I am as a person. Like, I don't even know what they were talking about. That was not me. They were not describing me. They're not talking about me. They're saying how shy I am and, like, how quiet I am and how homey I am and, like, like a cozy girl that, like, takes care of the house. Because um, obviously we live in the same house and, like, I would help because I'm a nice person. But 
I'm anything far from homey. <laughs> If I were to be a housewife as a job, I'd get fired because <laughs> I hate cooking. I hate cleaning. I'm horrible at cooking. I'm okay cleaning my space, but I don't want to do it for others. I'm a very career oriented girl. I don't like pets. Kids, I want to have because I know my kids will be super smart and successful and amazing. And like, I love them with all my heart, obviously. Like, I'm excited to have kids, but 10 years down the line, <laughs> not right now. <laughs> okay, maybe seven, <laughs> but not right now at all, <laughs> you know? So it's just such a treat hearing somebody call me cozy or like call me quiet. And like, you haven't really opened up. Like, you should have talked to people more. I respect your opinion. I respect your opinion. Even though I did. But I respect your opinion, you know? And that just really taught me a lesson about judgment. About how other people's opinions have nothing to do with me. Other people's opinions are their own responsibility. And that's not our responsibility I want to take up on myself. Mic drop. Okay, now, moving on. What are the seven things I'm doing for 2024? <laughs> 20 minutes into this podcast. First and foremost is successful goal setting. There's a difference between setting a goal and setting a goal successfully. Writing down, I will be blank successful, sexy, hot, rich, wealthy, in love in 2024 does not work. That's not how you set a goal successfully. To set a goal successfully, you need to follow smart, specific, measurable, attainable, reachable, time bound. You need to write it in present tense from the first point of view. And final thing, you need to identify how you're going to feel upon reaching a goal And bonus thing, how it fits into your life vision. Your goals are not independent entities. They tie into your whole dream life picture. And if they don't, that's not the goal for you. And personally, I really love group goal setting. I think it's so much more powerful that way because not only is it like a workshop setting, that's how we did it at the retreat at least, but also you learn so much from other people when they get to share and you can connect with so many other people and network with them. And actually, I'm thinking of doing something January 13th maybe a little workshop or something. But you know, stand look up, stand look up. Who knows? Who knows? Ah! <laughs> Check my Instagram at very nothing. I repeat at very nothing at V E R A N O T H I N G for updates because maybe I already hosted it. I don't know. Check there. <laughs> anyway, I'm <laughs> excited. Second thing is I'm I just created a vision board and we started that practice at the wellness retreat actually. But so to create a vision board, the most important thing to do there is when you're creating it, and I'm looking at it over there because it's right there. First things first, do not show it. You can show it to people you love and trust, but I still wouldn't. Um, somebody, one of my friends was like, can you show me your vision board? Like how to do it? And I was like, no, sorry. <laughs> it's a very personal thing, so no, but I'll tell you how I did it. So how you do it is you put yourself in the middle, you divide it up into four areas. There's business, money, career, one area, relationships, the other area. So to keep it organized. Third is self-improvement, like self-development. And fourth is health and wellness. And In those areas, I did like a horizontal board. You write down your intention. Like, for example, for business, career, money, like I am a millionaire. I blah, 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 blah. For relationships, I'm in a happy, fulfilling relationship. Or I'm having the best friendships. I have fun making friends, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you want to write. An intention. And then you support that by a bunch of visuals, i.e. photos that align with your goals that you have set for 2024. Yeah, back to step one of 2024, successful goal setting but also that support your intention and that really make you feel inspired. The pictures also do not have to make sense for anybody else but you. If to you, financial success is a red dot, then put up that red dot because it makes sense to you. Now, third thing that you should do in 2024, and I'm doing as well, I've already done it, which is how it works, is to start your business, start your social media, start your hustle, become a content creator, open something up. But The reason why I think it's so important is because we see so many people nowadays breaking out of the nine to five matrix. <laughs> I sounded so like alpha male bro podcast guy when I say that. Um, but truthfully, <laughs> truthfully, there's nothing wrong with working nine to five that supports your vision and that supports your goals. I applaud you. In fact, I think it's super cool that you do that as long as you love it. But if you don't love it and you're looking for a change and you want to pursue something as a creative pursuit, then join my creator camp and become a successful content creator. <laughs> Self plug. Just kidding. Applications are not currently open, but stand like up for when they will be. Anyway, um, but truthfully, I think it's something, it's so important to do something that brings you joy and something that you can turn into a financial prospect. And with content creation, I'll tell you, it's fairly simple, especially when you're working with a coach or a mentor like myself. And this is not a plug, like an intended plug of like, you should work with me. But um, it's more of an eye opener that there's a lot of possibilities out there. And to make your money, you do not have to work an nine to five. For example, when I started with brand deals, when I first started doing it consistently, back then, even back then, I was wake making way more than I would in my first job out of college, for example. Right now, I'm making way more than I would in my second job out of college or third or fourth. 
executive position. <laughs> the list goes on, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm so grateful for that. And it's totally a possibility. And if I can, so can you. If all my clients did it, so can you. So when I say, say side hustle, I don't just mean social media content creation. That's the one I would recommend because I know how easy it is. Like, I wouldn't say it's easy. I think it's very challenging. But when you have the right support, like you have the right community and you have the right mentor and or coach, then it becomes easy. Like it's fairly simple. You know, it's a fun process. It's like turning your hobby into a money-making machine. It's great. It's really great. Um, also, it triggers a lot of self-work within you, which I think is the most amazing part. The way my confidence has grown, the way my public speaking skills have grown, <laughs> right now put me up on a stage, Staple Center, or now it's called Crypto.com Arena, in front of thousands of people I don't know. I'll coach or lead an amazing practice. I actually want to do live shows. Maybe not this year, but in the upcoming years. That'd be really exciting. Anyway, so that's very important. Um, side hustle can also look like, I recommend reading The 4-Hour Workweek. I repeat, The 4-Hour Workweek. It's a book. Um, I forget the author and the guy's name. But basically, it talks about how to create a business that essentially you take yourself out of the equation and you work like four hours a week, which I've never really tried that. I don't know. For me, like I said, my work is not like my my side. Well, it's my full-time job. <laughs> side hustle. <laughs> Social media coaching is my ikigai. Like being a content creator is my ikigai. I love having the impact that I do and the influence that I do. And I'm so grateful that it grows with each and every single day. And I get to inspire and motivate and launch more people to discuss. <laughs> to me, that's the most fulfilling thing in the world. And I just can't believe that I got so lucky. So for me, that's my outlook. But if you just want to make more money, then side hustle is the way to go for our work week, I repeat. Now, fourth thing is visualization. I already talked about uh, Awakened by Big Wild. But when you visualize why it's so powerful is because it is quite literally psychological and neurological process. It's not a woo-woo like visualize your dream self. It's the same with affirmations. When you tell your brain, something enough times it's gonna believe it that's just how it works it's pretty scientific with visualization i recommend visualizing every single day yourself achieving your goal but here's what most people get it wrong it's not just the vision of yourself achieving your goal it's also how you're going to feel upon achieving your goal the feeling is truly the anchor that's what anchors that visualization to yourself actually achieving your goal and once you visualize it enough times your brain will start looking for ways to make that happen for you because your brain does not know the difference between reality and what's not real Okay, there was actually an experiment done with two groups of people. One were piano players that practice scales for a week physically, right? And a brain scans were taken. And the other group of people was people that visualized practicing scales. And guess what the difference was in brain scans? Zilch, nada, nothing. Same exact neurological processes occurred, thus changing up the way those people's brains worked but no real differences. So that's why visualization is so powerful. Once again, if you repeat something to your brain enough times, it's going to start looking for ways to make that happen. It's going to start looking for solutions, which also something that's in, in 2024 is positive self-talk. I do not, I do not want to hear any self-deprecation in 2024. And I'm guilty of this as well. I like to make self-deprecating jokes, jokes, <laughs> jokes sometimes, but I'm cutting that shit out. Out. When I say out, I mean out. It's out. Okay. 2024 is affirmations, positive self talk only, visualization. I'd recommend doing it to Awaken by Big Wild, truly. Like, try it out and tell me. Because the um, coaches that I coached in the retreat for uh, the successful goal setting practice, they said it was their most vivid visualization of all time. Like, they got so into it, a lot of people started crying almost. So, that's the D says. I'm telling you, when it works, it works. All right. Now, the one, two, three, four, fifth thing is mindfulness. And when I say mindfulness, it's just really paying attention to how you live and slowing down whenever you need to. Because for me, for example, what really was a mindful experience was that retreat because I wasn't on my phone much. I was eating pretty simple foods. Like I was spending a lot of time in nature and with people I didn't know. And that caused me to slow down a little bit. And I had a lot of changes since then. I started eating a lot more intuitively. Um, so I got in better shape automatically, even though that was like a week ago. <laughs> but it impacted me a lot. Um, and when I say intuitively, it's almost like I don't really want a snack. Like, I just don't. It my And I'm a big snacker, okay? I used to binge eat all the time. When I say binge eat, I mean eating, like, a tub of five pounds of vanilla ice cream in two or three days. And then five chocolate waffles, cakes, in two days <laughs> that grandma sent from Russia. So that's what I say when I say binging. Um, I don't want to say I had a binge eating disorder. I, I don't want to classify it as that because um, I never got, like, tested. So... I can't say, but point is it was not healthy because then I would go on a run right afterwards to burn it off. And my goodness, did I feel like yucking. <laughs> so, and so for me, not to snack, 
Um, it's crazy because I always have a tendency to when I'm sad, like when I'm bored, I'm like, mm, I feel like I'll just go grab a little treat. But I really cut that out since becoming more mindful. I also foods like fast foods, candy, and I'm, I have the biggest sweet tooth. They don't really interest me anymore. Mind you, I still like my coffee and I add a little bit of sweetness into it, but I add agave syrup. So it's like, or like honey if I have it, but it's not the sweeteners because then everything just kind of tastes bad to me. That's not natural. I feel like that's a big part of mindfulness. I don't scroll as much anymore. I remember, I think at the beginning of the December, my screen time on TikTok was four hours a day for one of the days. And I was like, you know, what? that is enough. I'm putting an end to this. And as soon as I realized that everything became really well, um, cause I just stopped. And after the retreat, upon becoming mindful, I don't even really check it. And when I do, I know exactly what I'm doing. And I'm like, you know, what? this is kind of boring. I'm going to stop. Like I read instead. I go on a walk instead. And I don't know. I just have a great time. So that was that with mindfulness. Um, I think a way to do it is to start by having a little social media detox, like once a week at least, where you just don't check your phone. And instead to fill your time, you reset, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, weekly resets, one of the things I'm doing for 2024, and I recommend you do as well. But yeah, just tuning out the noise, essentially. Not really talking to people who do not bring you joy. Um, I'll give you an example. So it's not about joy, it's about choosing myself. But I have a person in my life that I'm very close to and like absolutely love them with all my heart. But they do not impact my productivity positively. Okay. When I say that, I really mean that they do not impact my productivity positively more together. I tend to like become lazier overall. And I don't like that. It's not natural to me. For me, I'm like a grind set girly. They really slow me down in some aspects, which is like really good. Like when I'm relaxing or, you know, just hanging out with them. But when I'm working, like, we can't work in the same room together. And it's so sad, like, when, when you want to go out with your friend, like, work, but you can't, you know, because, like, you just don't have that vibe. So what I started doing is I put myself on a schedule. I'm like, okay, I can hang out with this person, like, on these days or at these times or when I don't have this amount of work. And when I do, then, you know, I'm just here by myself. So I strongly recommend doing that as well. And I feel like it comes to that sort of mindfulness because then you gain a lot more self-awareness and consciousness almost in your days, which I think is very powerful. Now... Thing six, secret six is achievement journaling. Nobody does this and I don't know why, but if you ever feel like you're not doing enough, you're not moving fast enough, yada, 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 what you're not doing is you're not achievement journaling. And my question is why? What you do is get out your journal, okay? And I recommend doing this by hand and then write down every single night, top three things you did to get closer to your goals. What is that gonna do? To your brain, it's gonna signal, okay, I'm moving forward. Okay, I'm reaching my goals and you're probably gonna start reaching them faster. You're gonna become a lot more motivated but also, it's just a blast to feel proud of yourself and to be like, you know, I am doing good. <laughs> I am doing good. I am doing great. I am moving towards my goals. But also, it can be a really great accountability check. If you're sitting flat on your ass and you're not doing anything, then to you, it's like a signal. Hey, maybe I should get off my ass. Hey, maybe I should actually start moving towards my goals, you know, which I think is really great either way. I don't do it every single day. I'm going to be honest. I don't think I've done it for like a week. <laughs> That's why I said things I'm doing for 2024, starting in January 1st. Just kidding. Um, but I really got to start today. I've been doing it beforehand, but then I just like slip up because I don't always have my journal with me. And I think that's the problem. And I'm going to start carrying that. Well, anyway, that's a little reality check for you. And the seventh thing is weekly resets. This I could not recommend anymore. I love weekly resets. I don't know why nobody does it. I don't know why nobody does it. For me, a weekly reset is budgeting. That's very important. I'm a little budgeting freak. It's not that like I need to budget, but for me, it's just... I'm very tight-fisted when it comes to money, okay? I don't want to say I'm greedy or anything like that. Not the case at all. For other people, I don't care. Like, I'll spend anything on them. <laughs> Be like, oh, <laughs> new iPhone's going to make you happy, sister. All right. <laughs> Dropped it. <laughs> Dropped some bang on that. But for myself, I'm like, you know what? Like, I don't really want to go out for a coffee, even though I want to. I'm like, mm, no, make your own, sis. Make your own. Save money, you know? Um, so I really like having specific budgets for food, for this, for dates, for this, for that, for this, blah, 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 for gifts. And it's just really nice because then I save a lot of it and I have a lot of financial goals in 2024. So it's actually very helpful. With a weekly reset, what that is, is that looks like cleaning. That looks like scheduling your week. <laughs> where So this is my Vera, Vera productive organizational method. What you do is first things first, you brain dump all the tasks for the upcoming week. Then you divide them into the Eisenhower matrix. That consists of urgent and important, those two scales. And it goes like this. There's a horizontal scale and a vertical scale as well of urgency to importance. Google that up. I repeat, Eisenhower matrix. E-I-S-E-N-H-O-W-E-R matrix. Okay, Eisenhower matrix. I-E-Zenhower. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Got confused for a second, but nope. It's the spelling bee champion over here. So you divide that up. Once you have that, um, you obviously just schedule the tasks they need to do. The tasks they need to do urgently, you start right away. 
And then you can, you can scratch some stuff off or delegate them. And if you can delegate, then schedule them in. And I scheduled things like that for the upcoming week. And when you have a weekly reset, it's just so nice because you know what you're doing. You know what your goals are for your business, for your life, for your friends, for your relationship. And it's just so nice. I feel like it gives you a lot of direction. And hot girls, they do weekly resets. They clean their room. They clean their space. They set goals. They budget. They do this and they do that and they spend time alone and they have a blast. So for me, I do weekly resets actually not on a Sunday because Sundays I do spend it with my BF, my boyfriend. Um, I feel like I mentioned him like five times in this. I don't even know why. <laughs> Just a big part of my self-improvement routine, honestly, <laughs> which is really nice. I love relationships like this. Uh, but I do it uh, at the end of Saturday, like Saturday afternoon and so forth and so on. Because also with that, I do content batching and such which is really nice as well because it just helps a lot. Um, yeah, that's a tea. Okay, so now moving on to my routine in 2024. What does that look like? My routine in 2024 is, first and foremost, I wake up with my hatch alarm at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Right now I'm waking up at 6.15, so no worries. I'll just shift it to 6. But that's because it's really hard for me to get into bed before 10. If I were that to me, what happens usually? I start working. I love my work. Like I said, it is my purpose. It is my mission. It is my ikigai. So I just lose track of time. By the time I blink again, it's 12 a.m. And then it's 1 a.m. And then it's 2. <laughs> and then I don't really want to wake up at 6 anymore. I've got four hours of sleep, you know? So yeah, I just really got to have work boundaries. And I'll really try to do that today because it is the day that I'm recording this podcast and I have to create like a little reel to support it. So that's the rough part. Anyway, we'll get it done. We'll get it done. <laughs> Hopefully manifesting this for myself. And then I work out six times a week. I weight lift four of them, which I do. I have one hot yoga day, which I do. I love core power yoga. And then I have one run per week, which I do. Um, this week, I actually had one run yesterday. And today, I went and I weightlifted. And it's really nice. And it's really cool with weightlifting to see your progress, to see yourself getting stronger. I can do push-ups now, like seven plus. Actually, I think I could do, if I had to max it out, probably like 14 push-ups, which is really good. I know people who could not do push-ups. I could not do push-ups when I first started weightlifting, you know? When I first started doing it regularly, because my weightlifting story I actually started in like 2020 during quarantine. And then I did it for like a year. And then I think I focused on tennis and then I quit weightlifting or like just did it on the side. And then this year, obviously I got into my running bear era. <laughs> so, but the upcoming focus is definitely weightlifting, but I still want to do like another half marathon because I just love running. I hate it. Like I, I like to think that I hate it, but actually I love it. And every time I run, I'm like, oh, why do I do this more often? I just love running. And high yoga is obviously a staple. I don't know if there are any benefits to it being hot. Like you don't burn more calories or anything that's deceitful. And the reason why I come out snatched is because you lose so much water in the process, but it just makes me feel good. And like, I feel sexy. I feel hot coming out of there quite literally. Ha ha, judge the sweat. But also I love flexibility and strength and I'm really good at yoga. At the retreat, we did yoga and like Alexandra, she, she said I slayed. And I was like, yeah, I know. Duh, I've been doing it for like a year. I love hot yoga. Anyway, and then third thing is achievement journaling. I Like I said, I got to get more consistent on that. Before the, um, like a week ago when I stopped, I was so like I was doing it every single day. It was great. It was great. Um, but now, you know, I slipped off. <laughs> I'm going to get back on literally today. So that's great. And then obviously reset Saturdays with having a top achievement of the week, budgeting and finances, setting intentions for the week, I think is super important. Even intentions for anything you're doing. Like my intention for this podcast is to record it to the best of my ability. That's a great intention. And it really focuses and structures things. And I think it's very important. Intentions, I don't know why people don't do them, but I think they really should to become your most successful self in 2024. And then final thing for 2024 is content batching. That's also something I'm going to start doing. Um, I kind of started doing it this week and because I recommended it to all my creator clients, I was like, guys, you have to content batch. <laughs> do I content batch? Yes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> like I said, I just need more structure in my work because I can become so inspired and just I just start doing something for seven hours and I blink and I've been working for like 20 hours and I'm like, oh my gosh, no, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I didn't get what I need to get done. I just got creative and started doing other things. So more structure for sure. But content batching is actually great. I used to do it all the time. It's great. It's amazing. So yeah, those are my cornerstones of my routine for 2024. Actually, you know what? Under this episode in the comment section or in Spotify, comment what your number one goal for 2024 is. I'll tell you mine later when it comes true. <laughs> I'm so excited for it. I think it's going to be so cool, but I already shared a lot and I'm really grateful for you listening to this episode. Gen V, I believe in you. You're going to be the most successful person ever 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 this is going to be the best year for you i just know i'm manifesting let's take a moment right now whether you're driving you're listening to this when you're walking talking i don't know but close your eyes if you can if you can't obviously focus on the road <laughs> or whatever it is that you're doing take a deep breath in breathe out and in your love just feel the love and the power of our community gen v feel the success of this amazing year and 
let's send it to each other through our heart by saying we're growing together always in three repeat three two one we're growing together always and once more i want to hear it out loud i don't care what you're doing if you're in a public if you're not in a public place repeat it out loud and if you're in a public place just say it to yourself in three two one we're growing together always oh i just felt that oh it right through the screen. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, leave my podcast a review and a rating. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, five stars, obviously, on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Duh. Duh. And new episodes come out every Wednesday at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Okay, I love you. I wish you the most successful year of your life. I want you to come back to this episode a year from now. Read your goal, the top goal that you wrote, and just be like, you know what? I did that. I did that. Because, yes, you did. I love you so much. Have a blessed, blessed rest of your day. And Peace out, Jen B. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Three, two, two, one. one. Launch to success with Vera V. v, v, v.